Hey everyone, I'm John Negroni, film editor for theyoungfolks.com and host of the Cinemaholics podcast. Dune is the latest film from director Denis Villeneuve, and he also did Blade Runner 2049 and Arrival, Blade Runner 2049 being a movie I really, really love, Arrival being a very good movie as well. I mean, they're regarded by many people to be some of the best modern sci-fi films of the decade, probably. And similar to Blade Runner 2049, Villeneuve has decided to tackle a book adaptation that already got a film back in the 1980s. So in this case, he's adapting a story known to be difficult to put to film, and that is Dune. So David Lynch did his own take on the material way back in 1984, which goes through plenty of the same beats as the novel where we follow a gifted young space noble named Paul, played by Timothy Chalamet, as his family is sent to a desert planet called Arrakis. In terms of resources, it's mostly barren, save for an extremely valuable spice that is the key to intergalactic space travel. So Paul's noble family has been tasked by the Emperor of the Galaxy to essentially tame Arrakis and bring these resources to heal. But to do that, they have to contend with giant sandworms that can detect human footsteps even on sand, as well as the planet's indigenous population, a group of humans called Fremen who've already figured out the best ways to survive the planet's inhospitable environment, to the point where their eyes have adapted to having a blue shaded color, they wear these special dry suits, that's my word for what is essentially the opposite of a wetsuit is what they have, it keeps them from overheating and it even recycles their sweat, it's really cool. Lynch's Dune was a big, harebrained, ambitious, but kind of absurd mess. It had a huge, huge budget, but the effects were weirdly comically bad. And as you can imagine from David Lynch, the story was very difficult to follow, profoundly difficult, I think, for people back in the 1980s. And it's a big reason why the studios have been very scared to do another Dune movie. They've really kept their distance from giving this property another chance. And we now have it, of course, here from Warner Brothers. And it stands to reason that they would trust someone like Denis Villeneuve with this project. He certainly lends his epic vision of what a modern sci-fi blockbuster should look, feel, and sound like to this movie. Now, to be clear, Blade Runner 2049 wasn't a big moneymaker, but the critics loved it. Arrival did make a lot of money, and that, of course, had Oscar's attention. So I could definitely see why they look at Dune as their big prestige genre movie that will hopefully for them sweep a lot of awards come Oscar season. But for all of its grand world building in Dune and the atmosphere, which I think is extremely immersive, unfortunately, I, I found the film's story to be extremely lacking. This is a part one, to be clear, which the marketing avoids calling out for probably obvious reasons. I think the whole do a part one thing died back with mocking Jay part one for the Hunger Games. It worked for Harry Potter, but aside from that, it, it tends to not work out super well. So these days we just don't say part one. We just say it's this movie, then this movie. Think Infinity War for Avengers and then Endgame, even though they're part one and part two. But yeah, they do not want the audience to think they're only getting half a movie, even though that is exactly what they're getting, I think. This movie clocks at 155 minutes. It's about two and a half to three hours long, and it covers the first half of the book, which is easy to pick up on once you notice that as you're watching this movie, we almost get about halfway in before we even get to Arrakis, which is the main setting. It, the movie suffers an extended prologue on a totally different planet, and it spends its time setting lots of stakes, which is important, but also repeating a lot of things, a, a slew of dream sequences in particular from Paul's perspective. Personally, I thought the first dozen or so times we go through one of his dreams had a specific narrative purpose, but by the time we see Paul daydreaming about characters we haven't met yet, but we know they're going to be in the movie eventually from the poster, once this happens so many times, for me, it really beggars belief why Villeneuve didn't trim this down, at least by an hour or so. There's just a lot of fat on the bone. I think because there was so much effort put into this movie, it just almost feels like they don't want to get rid of anything, which I can sympathize with. 
Now, the performances are nothing to scoff at besides. Oscar Isaac and Rebecca Ferguson are true highlights of this. They balance their different parenting styles in a script for our main character, Paul. For me, they were far more interesting than Paul because I think he's probably not going to be interesting <laughs> until the next movie. Uh, we see something really interesting with this dueling morality for him to sort of glean from his parents and reckon with. These were, for me, the most interesting aspects of the writing when Paul is gleaning advice from his very different parents and trying to make sense out of which of their legacies he should cling to more than the other while also pondering if he can have the best of both worlds. It's pretty effective stuff. And the, the rest of the performances, I would say, range from good to good enough. I found myself particularly taken in by Stellan Skarsgård as a levitating, deliciously villainous baron who feels like he would be at home in the Mad Max Fury Road universe. He wants to wage war on Paul's family. We also have Jason Momoa, who comes in as the sort of daredevil warrior swordmaster guy. He has a lot of thrilling moments in this. And I, I would say he doesn't stretch too far in terms of his range, but it's totally satisfying enough. Zendaya is in this movie. She was featured prominently in the marketing, but we really don't get much from her in this. She's more or less a phantom in Paul's mind for now. And like I said with Paul, I think the next movie is going to be what really finishes that sentence. Honestly, it completes the sentence. And similarly, we really don't see anything here from Dave Bautista that really stands out amidst the rest, which I was a little disappointed by. So I want to be clear, Dune is half a movie in many respects. It's half a movie in the sense that everything that I think is great about it is only about half of what you actually get. The rest is not terrible, and it's definitely not incomprehensible. It's all just a little flat emotionally, save for a few heart-filled scenes, like I mentioned earlier, between Paul and his different parents. And I also think the movie goes a long way in satisfying that sci-fi itch a lot of fans of the genre in the book might be looking for. That is an imaginative and sprawling tale where you get to consume more and more ideas. Little things like how people fight with shields that light up depending on how brutal the attack is, or these dragonfly like flying vehicles that zip through the sky and they have like this turbulence this edgy i don't know if we're gonna make it sort of feeling that you get from being in a propeller jet and also there's a lot of food for thought in this movie it's just not all that much thought i guess save for a lot of what feels to me empty and superficial contemplation of just basic ideas like destiny and legacy in other words i wish the writing had as much flavor or spice as the sight and soundscape I think with a movie like this, when you have such an immersive world and you have a world that feels alive and you're doing it in a sci-fi fashion, those things need to connect a little bit better. I think Dune does this in the novel for sure, because it is sort of about the, the way we have this high tech universe in this very low tech environment. And for me, I didn't really get that from this movie like that message just didn't really come together and i don't see how they would be able to do that in the next one if they of course do another one we'll have to see but i hope they do because that would be the key for me to this movie being much better than it is i still think that blade runner 2049 is in my opinion villanov's best work and i would say that it's by far the superior sci-fi movie but if you liked that film dune is essentially more of what you probably liked about that film just missing what i think are the crucial ingredients that make it better than just good or okay or so so like a movie that really sticks with you and kind of changes the game dune doesn't really change the game in any respect uh, it's not super innovative beyond some of the things i mentioned that were Definitely fun and satisfying in a very technical sense. So Dune opens in theaters this Friday in the U.S. It's already making a good bit of money internationally, which it will need in order to make up for its big budget. Critics are mostly positive so far, and I assume its high Rotten Tomato score will hold. I don't think it will move very much, honestly. Uh, I wrote a full review of the movie for the youngfolks.com, so you can read that if you are still curious about the movie, and I will, of course, discuss the film even more on next week's episode of Cinemaholics. But my question for you all is, when it comes to sci-fi, this is a big question because I, I want you to answer this because I think I, I think studios don't agree on what, you know, the producers and writers and directors, they don't agree. What do people want from a sci-fi movie? What is it that you want from a sci-fi movie or you think that you want from a sci-fi movie? 
For me, I want what I mentioned before, a really powerful, compelling, and thought-provoking connection between the story and the visual effects. And the more cohesive those things are, I think the more powerful and lasting your sci-fi movie or novel or TV show or anything like that is going to be. Uh, but what do you think? What What is it when you watch a sci-fi movie that you're looking for, that you want? And it probably is very different from mine. It, you know, it should be because we're different people. So uh, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And yeah, until then, I'll see you next time.